was meant to be a presentation by me about, um, I guess, raising the level of discourse in relation to things like editor decline. Um, because I hear a lot of arguments against some of the stuff that the foundation and the community are trying to do to reverse it, which is fine. Um, but some of them aren't very good. And I'd rather people stopped using them and moved on to, like, I guess, uh, legitimate or at least contentious points where we can actually say, actually, I disagree with this because because those you can actually you know, have a conversation about. Instead of just newbies are silly, sod newbies. We don't want any newbies, which is kind of hard to fight because it's not really an argument. Um, then I got hyped up on adrenaline 20 minutes before and we decided that a panel would be a really good idea. <laughs> and then he made the stupid decision of letting me on the panel. <laughs> there are stupider decisions he's made today, like me. <laughs> yeah, and, and then we had Tom join and now this is going to rapidly devolve into bad stand-up. <laughs> No, it's not. I am the foundation representative that will keep order. Just, just kidding. <laughs> because Eastern the foundation block. is terribly good at that right now. <laughs> okay. So by means of this changing of the guard, we should probably introduce ourselves. Um, so I do not represent the foundation. Um, my name's Adam Highland. I hope you know me from a positive interaction as Proton K on the English Wikipedia, and where I'm an administrator. And uh, I'm evidently been brought up here to produce the con to Oliver's position. So I will be arguing that newbies are terrible, and <laughs> and, and and that the horrible sort of uh, vicious cycle that we've created with our wiki culture is actually probably not a, an issue. <laughs> Wow, that was exciting. Um, hi, I'm Mariana. I work for the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I'm also an editor on English Wikipedia. I uh, primarily work on editor engagement experiments. So I am pro newbie, yes. Uh, I'm just here for the ride, so yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Oliver. I do work for the Wikimedia Foundation. I do not represent the Wikimedia Foundation. <laughs> Nothing I say should be interpreted as an official position or an unofficial position or something a couple of people whispered very drunk l late at night outside a bar or anything except my own ramblings. Um, I'm also an editor on NWiki and an administrator. I've been around since 2006. I've written about 70 good articles and about 500 total. Uh, that's my role. Yeah, I'm a show-off deal. Um. I'm Tom, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. I'm a wiki slut. Uh, I edit. <laughs> <laughs> Take it off. Keep um, us family friendly, please. Uh, so I edit mostly on English Wikipedia, and I'm apparently here to disagree with people. Um, I am Sven Mangard. I'm an English Wikipedia user and a Commons admin. Uh, yes, that happened last night. Um, and I am here because Iron Holds has terrible judgment. <laughs> The fact that I'm doing this as a panel in the first place is indicative of that without looking at the people actually in front of All right, so do we want to start by bringing up some topics that we want to talk about, or do we want to get questions from the audience, uh, any kind of order to do this? All right, Oliver, go okay. for it. In that case, I will ask the audience if they have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, show of hands, how many of you are uh, editors on, and I, I presume we're talking mainly about English Wikipedia here, just because it, the, you're all, we're all English Wikipedians here. We're, we're Western and NWiki centric and yeah. horribly biased systematically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so show of hands, how many of you are uh, active on English Wikipedia? All right, okay. We are in DC, so. Newbies? Yeah, other projects, other projects? Very nice, yeah. good. How many is not active at all on English Wikipedia? <laughs> not active at all on English Wikipedia. At all, yeah. right? Mm. See, I go on about how great it is I'm in my volunteer role, and then my boss turns up and sits about five rows back. <laughs> no pressure. None whatsoever. Mm. So there are a few arguments in, or, or classes of arguments in particular that I have a problem with. Um, I, I've got to be honest, in, in thinking about it, I wasn't really distinguishing between bad logical ones and bad emotional ones, um, insofar as I like bad logical arguments. Because bad <laughs> logical arguments are um, at least trying to be logical, which means that you can fight them with logic and actual, actually argue. Um, bad emotional ones are ones where it's a lot tougher because you cannot win it by playing the same game as the person you're arguing with. Um, 
Arguments in particular I have a problem with, or the specific one that this panel, or rather my initial presentation was to discuss, um, was the argument, and I'm paraphrasing slightly from the quote I, that, that I picked out, um, but I see it a lot, that I'm not saying newbies are dumb, I'm just saying that I made it through, you made it through, and people who can't are maybe too stupid to contribute here. Which is kind of an I'm not racist but statement. <laughs> um, but it's, it's an argument I have a problem with um, for reasons that I'm, I'm happy to explain if we want to go with that or we can spread it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we want to spread the conversation out or no, people just, just chip just in when they have something to add? Yeah, I would, I would just throw out your thesis and then we'll pick it apart. Okay. It, it's not a very good thesis. Um, but it's... it's Here's another question. How many of you have started editing in the last two years? See, the problem with this conference is it's a lot more demographically diverse than previous ones I've been to. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and it's, it's, it's a, it's a good thing. It also completely screws itself. the argument I was going to make. But I can make it anyway. Statistically, you people are overrepresented. Thank you for showing up. It's awesome to have you, peop you here. And if the ratio was this good in the actual community, uh, Actually, no, I'd be fired if that was the case. So, so please, <laughs> keep things as they were. I, I do not want to be surplus to requirements. Well, but maybe we should ask some of these people if they've had this experience before, if they've sure. dealt with issues of coming in and feeling like other people expect them to be mad geniuses and get very frustrated when they don't understand everything all at once. That makes sense. Anyone, anyone have this uh, problem? And care to share a story about it? James, don't put your hand up. You've been here since <laughs> 2002. <laughs> Can we get a well, show of hands to see how many other people who either, either you left the English Wikipedia or you, you are still there who that has happened to? Right? Okay. Now, all, right. all of you without your hands up who edit the English Wikipedia are liars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but no, here, here's a question. Put your hands up again if you've had a, a bad interaction with someone when you were a new editor. Uh, someone saying, you know, why did you do this? Now, keep your hands up if... It wasn't just someone saying, why did you do X, but taking the attitude of how is it possibly comprehensible that you didn't know that you weren't to do X. <laughs> James, again, you've been here since 2002. They didn't have <laughs> rules. <laughs> but there were no rules back then. <laughs> yes, it, it was chaos. And, uh, you know, on the seventh day. Um, <laughs> But so, so this, is, this is the problem I have, or the problem I have with that argument. It assumes that, um, it, it, it assumes that things haven't got more difficult or more, more complex. Because a lot of editors joined in 2005, 2006. I'm one of them. Things were a lot simpler back then. Things were a, a lot more permissible. I looked through my first contributions. Uh, I did stuff that these days would at best get me, you know, blocked for a couple of months. Not out of malice, but simply out of confusion as to how things worked. And instead of getting blocked for a couple of months, I had people come in and say, no, this is how you do it. And deletion is not actually blanking a page, it's adding a CSD tag and so on and so forth. I want to add uh, a question. You're asking, you know, have people had their hands up if they had negative interactions. I just realized that a lot, I, I can, I think, honestly, say I've never had anybody yell at me on the English Wikipedia. You are so lucky. <laughs> if I were to reproduce my first 500 edits today, Sure, I would have been yelled. Yeah. That is true. So I'd like to see a show of hands from um, some of the 2005, 2006 generation here. Does anybody agree that their their first edit was a person trouble? Mm. Mine, mine was, yeah. but I only did typo corrections. <laughs> <laughs> but but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Productive. Did you do typo corrections in British or American English? Because one of them's going to get you banned. <laughs> <laughs> M dashes. Ooh. And, and you use British English, right? Otherwise, I'm going to have to, like, retroactively ban you. <laughs> you deleted his words, <laughs> and he didn't stalk you for a month. I started getting yelled at once I switched. I, was, I didn't really get yelled at until I became an employee of the foundation. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't stopped since. And it has not stopped since. I joined in 2009, and even the stuff that I started out with would probably get you blocked. Mm. 
Even as an admin, I might have actually blocked myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so this is one of the reasons uh, I have a problem with that argument. It assumes that standards haven't changed. And I think we all agree that standards have changed. First, because... Um, they have. This, well, I, when I, I mean, first, the first standard that's changed is um, what's informally expected of work in terms of quality. Like, that's shifted pretty massively over the last few years. Um, second, the amount of stuff people have to learn like, policy just sort of exploded around 2006, 2007, and it hasn't really stopped since. If it, it's, it's sort of like Rule 34A. If it exists, there's a rule about including it on Wikipedia. Um, so can I, can I jump in here for a minute? Sure. So, so I'm an economist by training, but my, my sort of heart lies with anthropology. And one of the things that you learn in anthropology is that if you see a sort of seemingly bizarre cultural phenomenon or, or very persistent cultural phenomenon, then you really should be asking why that exists. So we're framing this in terms of like bad arguments or it wasn't always this way or it's changed, but we, I think, need to look at what elements of the culture perpetuate this and why. So how do we generate a culture that looks at new users with skepticism or how do we generate a culture that is willing and able to further perpetuate a bureaucratic rule system that drops people out over time and is that we, we, we are all sitting in this room, I suspect, because we feel that's a bad thing. And the first basis that we might say on which it's a bad thing is that it's empirically bad, that we get fewer new editors, that we have you know, long-term editors leaving, perhaps when they claim because of rules, rules like this. But we, in my opinion, we do need to attack that notion of this is a part of the culture and what elements are good or bad and what elements are potentially able to be modified. But before we grab into that for a second, I want to see, raise your hand if you think that you have an idea to change one of these policies, but have never attempted to put it forward because you think that it would be either yelled and shot down <laughs> in, in just massively hostile environment, or because you just didn't know how to. Um, I bet you did and you got yelled at. <laughs> yeah, that too. It's actually surprising because I, I thought from Oh, if you base your, your views of Wikipedia on internet relay chat, you get um, a sampling that is very active and very vocal, um, and also very insane. But, but that group tends to have a lot of ideas, and so I'm surprised that so few people in the room never had an, a, an idea to change something that they just held back. I, I think this is actually kind of crucial to the reason that um, the bureaucracy has perpetuated and expanded. So um, another slightly narcissistic hand-raising thing. I promise it has a purpose. Hands up if you saw my presentation in uh, Haifa last year. OK, you people are going to find the next two, three minutes really boring, because you've heard it already. Um, it. it People, the people um, who started creating a massive policy did so with the best of intentions, which is Wikipedia is exploding in terms of numbers and we need to write these rules down because otherwise people won't know how to follow them. This was around 2005, 2006. The problem is it means that um, it normalized the idea of everyone following sp very specific rules and policy rather than common sense in the tranche of people who came in during that period. And that is um, the primary tranche in terms of editors still remaining and in terms of editors contributing in the policy uh, pages in the Wikipedia name space, so on and so forth. Um, so the people with the voice and ability to modify policy or to change how things formally work rather than how things work for the thousands of editors who go, eh, fuck that, and just make edits, um, are people who have the idea of you follow the rules, normalized, which means that when they encounter something not in the rules, they're first to follow it. And so you get uh, just this massive accumulation of edge cases, all with the best of intentions, because we want to help newbies, and newbies' articles are getting deleted, and so the solution is to write a new notability policy for a specific area where this is happening that is broader than the general notability guidelines. Or because um, something's not being deleted efficiently enough, or, enough or, or some people aren't getting told that their thing is being deleted, so the solution is to mandate that everyone you know, do, to use a legal phrase, strict scrutiny checks before <coughs> anything can ever be touched. Um, and, and so, as Adam says, it is a cultural thing, and it, but it's come about because people wanted to not hurt newbies. And the solution seems to be that if you don't want to hurt newbies, you wrap them in cotton wool so they can't hurt, you know, hit themselves on anything sharp. 
And the meta narrative, and I'm sorry for these terms, but the meta narrative that, that develops here is one that I suspect will be a lot familiar to long term English Wikipedia editors, which is sort of a law and order mentality, right? If you're faced with a situation where the rule is probably wrong, contra one of the five pillars, right? Uh, you, the solution, I'm just going to put this down. Uh, contra to one of the five pillars, <laughs> the solution is if the rule is wrong, don't seek to break the rule, but work within it and change it which the unfortunate corollary is because all of the rules that fit some area that's already been covered have people who are interested in how they work and are used to how they work. So the ways that you can change the rules are at the margins. So it slowly spills over and spills over to more things and you get this sort of combinatorical explosion of tiny three-letter acronyms that eventually have to go to four and five-letter acronyms <laughs> because they're covering different areas. Because the idea based on you know what big explosion from 2004 to 2006 was we need to generate these rules and work within these rules because it's the only way we know how to cope with this expansion. Ad additionally, there's a fundamental conflict between the people who want to break the rules when they think it would make sense, which is a perfectly valid option, and the people who, many of whom didn't write the rules, but the stereotype is the people who wrote the rules in the first place, who will beat you over the head with a large stick every time you break the rules because the rules are sacred and without the rules it is chaos. It is is Lord of the Flies all over again. It, pe people might apply, you know, the spirit of Wikipedia and ignore all rules and the five pillars in, instead of these very precise things that we've written out, and that would be terrible. So, um, right. I just want to have a, uh, I just want to comment briefly as one of those 2005, 2006 generation. Let's be honest, I think we wrote those rules because of the, of the popular perception of Wikipedia at the time is, uh, yeah a place so open to vandalism, so open to people writing articles about insignificant subjects, like I think there was, is actually way back in the deletion logs, an article someone wrote mainly to write a point about notice affixed to the door of the apartment building at some address in Helsinki. <laughs> and uh, we wrote those rules at that time because we, you know, especially, I mean, I always tell people, I think the big change in Wikipedia during what I call the singularity period was the Seigenthaler incident. And uh, we wrote those rules because we wanted to make Wikipedia long-term viability, vi viable in the long term. And if we, I think, and I'm honestly saying and listening to everybody here and agreeing to at least something of what you're saying, <laughs> if we hadn't written those rules, written the rules we did when we did, Wikipedia would be remembered about, would be about as active as MySpace today and would be remembered I, about I, the same way. I agree. Um, however, uh, this is the important thing. Those rules that we wrote to deal with very specific situations and sub-situations, those rules have become normalized. Those are how people think the rules work or how people think the world works within Wikipedia. And that means that specific rules written for specific situations are very hard to get rid of. Because if you get rid of it, or to, to say to a group of editors, hey, there's this rule here, I don't think it's necessary anymore, it was for a specific incident, and that's not happening. Um, so can we just scrap it because it's just extra verbiage that people are having to learn? Then what you're saying to them is, there is this thing that you have learned, that you have internalized, that you know at least the spirit of by rote. We want to remove it and institute this just this gaping black hole where anything could happen. <laughs> and in practice, people will be sensible about it. But in theory, you know, zebras could fly out of people's eyeballs and, and crazy shit could happen, and so it's scary. You mean we don't track this, people will be sensible about it. But this is, it's not uh, a problem solely on the internet. Any large organization undergoes exactly the same process. It's an organizational theory problem. There is no, there is no generally uh, accepted solution. When you see a large ossified organization, get away from it. I mean, I'm not going to advertise hierarchy, but you know, typically somebody imposes a destructuring and deoccupation from the top. It's very hard for an organization to self-change. Can I cut you off the pass here? <laughs> that is a much broader topic <laughs> that we want, to, we want to address here. And if we get into the sub that particular subject and trying to find pro and con <coughs> examples, we'll, we'll be in trouble. Was there someone? So in yeah, we have I was questions in the back. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I actually just made a Wikipedia account this morning, being encouraged by Wikimedia. Avoid ANI. And, and I came in, and I have to admit, it's a little terrifying listening to all of you guys. So I also want to ask the question, um, where can people who are brand new, newbies, um, get the information we need to make sure that um, we, we at least are somewhat familiar before we get started? Obviously. <laughs> um, is, is Sarah Steerchin here? Uh, no, but Sarah is. And Rick Keeper, one of our hosts. Yeah. 
So the, uh, the tea house. The tea house would be. Would the tea house would be right. the best place. So okay. W P Coleman Tea House is the, the place you want to go. Okay. <laughs> What's W P Colon? <laughs> See. <laughs> so so I'll just preemptively stop this. What's your username? I just want to block you. So. <laughs> No, uh, I had a serious point, which was kind of uh, going back to this, uh, which is that the way that the community has become structured is it becomes so large um, that we now have reached the point where people are running for adminship who, you know, the vast majority of people haven't heard of. So, like, if I go and look at RFA, request for adminship, I will see people every week who I've never heard of before. And I am being asked to judge whether or not they will be a good candidate to be an admin. That seems unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> um, because... Right now, RFA is... Okay, RFA yes, exempting the fact that it's dead as, you know, a desert or something. But <laughs> it, other than that, it the people who do come in, the people who do come in, there's a high likelihood that I'm not familiar with who they are. There will be a small number of people who are familiar with who they are. So, how do I judge whether they're going to be a good admin candidate? Well, let's look and see whether they've met various criteria, like do they uh, do CSD properly, can, uh, speedy deletion? Um, and that's pretty much a lot of what goes on in admin debates is, are these people able to correctly nominate articles for deletion or not? Which is fine, but that doesn't tell me whether or not they're going to be able to interact with newbies in a little language we call English, <laughs> rather than <laughs> templatees. Um, because to do that, I'd have to sit and read through 20,000 edits they've made over the course of a year or so. So there's actually a real problem there, which is that the power structure of how you progress in Wikipedia seems like it might actually enforce some of the behavior of templating, um, you know, speedy deletion templates, all this kind of stuff, which everyone seems to think is probably a bad thing. But because it's a structured, rules-based environment, this is how we actually judge the progression of people through the cycle of going up through Wikipedia. Uh, and that's actually incredibly relevant to what I was going to say, because I'm a bureaucrat on <laughs> Wikipedia. So, yeah. Uh, Um, my eyebrow itches. I'm sorry. Um, uh, like, actually, like one of the things I have observed with all of the numerous problems in RFA is, quite frankly, some people do not work well in a collaborative environment. Right. I'm I, sorry. I, I mean, Wikipedia being open, fantastic. We want as many people as possible, but some people suck. Uh, I, I'm just gonna. Make oh my God, they suck. <laughs> I'm gonna make a, a terrible. <laughs> I know, we're such assholes, aren't we? Yeah. I'm going to make a terribly hey. controversial comment right now. Um, there is somewhere oh. between a half dozen and a dozen users that pretty much anyone can think of that are really, really good content contributors and are really, really pieces of, of, of excrement. Um, I, I wish I could swear, but the cameras are on. <laughs> I am not going to name names because I, I value my life. I think this actually, this actually ties into a, a wider point that um, uh, Tom's point also tied into, which is... Wikipedia didn't start off with any social metrics of comparative standing or value. And so we had to invent them. And we invented them through things like edit count, or through good number of good articles, or number of featured articles. Which is broken because... It's, it's broken because it indicates how good someone is at doing a specific task, not how good they are at collaborating on specific tasks, or collaborating on wider tasks. Well, there's a, there's a related problem where we actually do have tons of awesome content contributors who are doing amazing work, Thank but you. who never end up at ANI, who never end up at ARPCOM, <laughs> who never get into the dramatic arguments with all the dramatic people, uh, who we just don't know about. Like, we don't know that they exist because they're they're, they're not the squeaky wheel, so they're not getting the grease. I think that's an even more important problem that we have to tackle. Why is it a problem? Couldn't we just have everyone like that? I mean, <laughs> no, but we, never had we should be A&I thanking those people. We should, be getting, we should be getting those like people that, involved. If everyone was like that, then us two would be yeah. fine. So. <laughs> Wishes were horses, beggars would ride. <laughs> <laughs> Tom was talking about all of the um, edits that you have to wade through, and the amount of edits just becoming become an admin has been growing and growing and growing. At one time, it was about 2,000 edits. Now, if you have under about 8,000, you're automatically put under not now, which was originally for someone with five edits trying to come up to become an, an admin. That's why the essay was created. And now not now is used if you have eight, 10,000 edits sometimes, it'll still get quoted. So the, uh, sure. so the metric of number of edits is rising and rising and rising. 
if you see that happen again, you have my permission to yell at the person placing not now and blame me if there's any trouble. Just do it. We need to start yelling at people if they do things that are so tremendously out of line that everyone can agree it's wrong. Stop yelling at people. Yeah. But by yelling, I mean reprimanding politely. Guy again and bracket off the edit count itis discussion from this because that will be endless. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm asking you, but yeah, no, if there's brackets, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> a thing that I've seen with Wikipedia is um, that a lot of this sort of tension and drama comes from essentially a siege mentality that we are a group of of smart, awesome people, which you know we might be, uh, but sort of up against this endless you know tsunami of stupid people who, you know, who don't even know how to do anything. Um, and in my opinion, that's sort of, that's essentially what the spirit of, of Wikis is actually supposed to be, that we're not assuming everybody who comes in is, is trying to roll over us. Do you guys think, uh, really the question is, I guess, do you think that that has changed over time, like you were talking about? And do you actually think that the, the way that the siege mentality has developed over time is actually reflecting how many people are coming in, or how many good or bad people are coming can, can in? Can I get your name? Daniel Horn. Yes, Daniel Horn. Daniel Horn, did From I place yeah. you in the audience to ask that question? Dude, all you're gonna yeah. do, all you're gonna do is come back to him with all the stuff I said last year. So, well, so I was brought up here to provide the con, which is, which is to say that I have to argue that Wikipedia culture serves a sort of positive purpose with respect to keeping out a certain group of people. That's a difficult thing for me to do because I don't think I fundamentally believe it. But <laughs> there is, for those of you who uh, are nerds, there is an education researcher named Rich Halverson who wrote a series of articles about uh, Teach for America students. Are you guys familiar with Teach for America? Yeah. All right, so for those of you that aren't, Teach for America is a high status and um, very competitive organization that plucks people out of Ivy League universities or very competitive public universities and brings them in for one or two year terms to teach in inner city schools. The idea being that these schools are really underserved by talent and that sort of thing. So you're bringing in these students who are, who are very capable and very dedicated and it's gonna come in and solve problems. People disagree on this, but whether or not Teach for America is a good or a bad thing in the net, but one thing that you really see is incredible burnout. You have these students who come in for a year, they say, oh my God, everything in here is miserable, everyone in here is an idiot, and they leave. And they're not malicious, they're not cynical, and they, they genuinely believe this. And when you go talk to the administrators and the teachers of these particular inner city schools, you find out they're not idiots. They don't want to be wardens, right? They don't want to, you know, they don't want to be miserable people. If you talk to the kids, you find out they're great, right? So if you look for individual causes and you say to yourself, I don't find any. And what Rich Halverson argued, which I believe fully, is you were seeing a fundamental culture clash between the people who were coming in from Teach for America and wanted to change the model of how you teach students with the people who were teaching at these schools. Now, now that I've established that, that there is a culture in public education in the United States and there was a culture in Teach for America. The, what he further argued was that culture in public education exists for a reason. Because in the United States, we rely on the pri primary and secondary education system to serve as a social equalizer. So they have a really tough job ahead of them that you have to be able to give everyone an equal opportunity once they turn 18. So when, that's, when that is your charge, you, ha you develop all of these particular you know, cultural peculiarities to, that will perpetuate keeping everyone up. You can't just say, I want to pick the good students and work with, well with them. You have to be able to bring everyone up. So uh, your name was, in the blue shirt? Daniel Case. Daniel Case. So you brought up there was a very good reason why we developed these rules, right? And that perhaps if we could explore the counterfactual, Wikipedia wouldn't exist today had we just been allowed to devolve into, into nonsense. It would be my space. I'm pretty, I, you know, I'm, as much as I agree I with disagree. Marshall, it's pretty I so, so, well, so I don't, I don't want don't to necessarily that. validate that argument or not. What I want to suggest is that argument itself is a constituent of the Wikipedia culture. So if you have Wikipedia editors, their internal culture is based around this particular fear. It's based around these particular threats. And so you develop legitimate, well-meaning reasons why someone would want to perpetuate a particular set of norms, right? And that perhaps 
some of these, even though it doesn't appear when we talk to the newbies or it doesn't appear when we talk to outsiders, appear to be rational, that they may still be serving a purpose insofar as we are keeping a certain set of editors out with a huge collateral damage. Mm. Well, well that, I was going to speak up for the new page patrollers, um, which is that everyone goes on about uh, uh, what, the siege mentality and that we should, we should forget about the siege mentality and we should be nice to people. But we can forget about the siege mentality, but there's a damn siege, right? Yeah. Go to AFC. It was at 800 pages. And if we don't treat it like a siege, it'll be at 1,000 pages or 1,500 pages. And then newbies will be sitting there on IRC saying, well, you haven't reviewed my page. It's been sitting here for three months. And we, we can say, oh, well, we've been happy. We've been playing with the Teletubbies and saying that, you know, <laughs> uh, we've been not, not nice to lots of people at the tea house. Yeah, but you haven't reviewed my fucking page. <laughs> That's not a good situation. But there, is a, there is a siege, damn it. Yeah, um, but why is it a siege? It's, it's not a siege because, you know, we have just this gross incredibly inordinate number of, of things coming in at each time. I mean, what do you say the numbers were at the moment, like 400? It's currently at 444. Okay, IFC. last time I checked, we had a lot more editors than 440. Problem is, we've got a lot of things to do with those, that lot of editors. If you want to resolve the, the fact that it's a siege, yeah, then well, treating sorry, people nicely... Sorry, we've done that, we mm. need to go and we'll get you more the editors. references, which has 231,000 articles which need references. This, oh, is, this is my point. Right <laughs> <laughs> this, this is my point, that we... we take a approach of short-termism of we can't start loosening things up because we've got all this other stuff to do and if we start having to distract ourselves with uh, running around being nice to people then you know that would be great but it can wait until after we fix these problems I, I think we have Kim and then Brandon and then the gentleman in the back in the red he's doing the microphone he's handing it around oh sorry gotcha. Okay, um, just telling them oh well I'll, I'll have to be short the, the one thing is that if you start measuring people right uh, by a number of edit counts or whatever reason you start f making differences you start running into a problem everyone should read Meatball Wiki you start running into a problem that's called the Vested Contributor which is listed on Meatball Wiki and it is a known anti-pattern which causes people to not work together so you you should try to make sure that all of your systems what don't do you work on by edit count oh and, and you mentioned edit count okay I'm dead I'm not um, um, the, the gentleman in blue that uh, mentioned uh, that if the, the rules in 2005 had not been changed, we'd now be in chaos. Well, I think we have some empirical numbers that say that right now Wikipedia's growth is slowing and we're having some issues. Mm. So I have a feeling that those rule changes in 2005 may not have been entirely correct. I, I, have to, uh, I have to now be stuck in the position of defending them. Um, <laughs> I don't think what he was saying was that they are now correct. I think most people are agreed that they're now problems, but it's a matter of were they correct for the time. Okay, um, and which and is a different take, taking a naive look at the graph of, of Wikipedia growth over time, you, you run afoul of what economic historians call the Cambridge endogeneity police. We don't see a counterfactual. We can't see a world in which we didn't institute these changes. So it is impossible and irresponsible to say we had these changes in the past, we see this outcome in the future, therefore that was the path of causality. All right, mm. so I have to, yeah, okay, we, we so can take one more question, that. I think. We've only got about two minutes, so do you have? Know? Right. We, we, we got two questions. So like, like tomorrow here, I'm, I'm a newbie and I've decided to jump in with the sharks today. <laughs> um, <laughs> not a problem. We really are supportive uh, I of just, mine. I'm listening to, Button. oh, thank you. I just, oh, I just found it. <laughs> I really want to participate. Um, when you're editing a page, when you're writing a page, how soon do you have to sort of put your references in when something's under construction? I mean, how fast do, do the sharks come in and start chomping away About at 15 it? seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, general rule, the general rule, the general rule is it's supposed to be 10 minutes. The no, seriously, rule. seriously. So you're trying, you're trying to create something, yeah. and it takes time. It's a process. How fast? Is, are, are the editors in there? Generally, they should give you 10 minutes. That's but, it. Yeah. No shit. <laughs> well, hang on, hang on. 
you, you have a group of people that have been doing it for years, creating a rule that says, do it right the first time or else. No, that's not the way it is. And you right, your article, because the, your article people, you the people who, don't, who haven't been doing it for years aren't the ones making the rules. I got the answer. You build your article in the user space tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've written so many articles that um, when I try and use the how many articles has this guy created tool, uh, it breaks. It times out. The query takes too long. Um, and I still start all my articles in the user space unless I'm sure I can finish it in just like one edit because otherwise people will mess with my stuff before I've even added the second paragraph. We've got one more question from the guy at the back. The, the last is more of a comment than a question. Uh, you're talking about a lot of old culture but there's nothing wrong and I think that you're leading to building a new culture. I found a mentor page, and I learned more from a mentor page that was pretty well abandoned than I learned in weeks of trying to find things and asking for help. In that page, I found out if I'm going to nominate something for deletion, I should look for a random page, participate in the discussion. If I'm going to make a culture of the backlog would be gone very quickly if random people made it a point to, when I get on, I'm going to look at one, one, new page. I'm going to look at three recent edits and reverse anything that's harmful or uh, graffiti, and then I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm done. <laughs> that's the spirit. <laughs> I gotta say, when I, when I was a newbie and I first started, I started in 2009, I literally got about two talk page comments in total that were in the least bit helpful, the rest of it were yelling. <laughs> and I have to say, for all the newbies that are complaining, I literally just went to the uh, policies and guidelines page and I read th went through the list, <laughs> and I read through every one, I memorized it, especially the ones for new page patrons, that's what I wanted to do, and that's how I learned. So, you're a saint. Yeah, <laughs> see this is, this is how, th this is how people assume that the people learn. That, that all the newbies who come in, they can just do what you did. What you did. But, but for every person sitting in the audience who managed that, I'd wager there are five or 10 or 15 or 50 who, tried, looked at how mammoth the task was, and just went, forget it. I'm trying to fix a typo. I don't care that much about this typo. And right. really, before the tea house, there was no one even there to tell you to do it. I mean, we, we, we throw people, we say, OK, anyone can edit. And then there is no safety net to tell you, OK, here's how to edit, which is why I'm really glad to see the tea house exists as that safety net now, yeah. so that you never have to read 600 pages of incredibly boring and complicated text Mm. alone in your room with no help. <laughs> My, I, I actually have, <laughs> uh, a few years ago, a few years ago I mapped out every single help page and how all the help pages link together and what the readability level of each one was using a series of algorithms. Um, yeah, it, it, it's scary. I, I refer to it as the oh fuck map. Or alternately, <laughs> what happened to the last four months of my life map. Um, but it's, it, it had two points which I like to bring up to scare people with. Um, even people who, who like vaguely or abstractly know how horrible a help documentation is. First, the average reading level is 21. Average reading level. Some of them are as high as 27. Second, and this is, and this is the really fun bit, if I follow the links, the, the primary links I am pointed to, not just links in the page, but links where I'm directed to click on those links, starting from uh, when I've just created a new account, uh, rather than starting from you know the tiny help button in the toolbox on the left or whatever, I am directed to an outdated W3C markup validation tutorial from 2005 before I am shown how to use the edit button. <laughs> Uh, the markup validation tutorial? It'll be fixed in like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have it off the top of my head, but I'm happy to, to throw the graph out to anyone tables, interested. But I Can believe I you were making that joke last year and it still hasn't been fixed. <laughs> <laughs> and they say there isn't a siege <laughs> mentality. Actually, I, I have to, to pimp someone else's presentation. Uh, Peter Coombe, who is presumably around somewhere, uh, is doing awesome work on help pages. You should find him and you should talk to him. And if you can't find him or talk to him, find Seiko and talk the to her.
Right. Um, I'm going to have to call this to a halt. Um, I've been told we all have to go away now. Uh, so I'm going to block you all uh, in the spirit of civility. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. So uh, apologies if you were confused. There's discrepancies between the paper schedule and the online schedule. So no, nope. we did not. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm I'm Stephen. Um, I'm an English Wikipedian, um, a Commons admin, and I work at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I'm Mariana. I already introduced myself earlier at the last panel, but yeah. uh, I also work at the foundation um, on the same team that Stephen works on, editor engagement experiments. So after, after that incredibly stressful and uh, <laughs> yelling panel, hopefully this talk will make people feel a little bit better about yeah. why we all participate in the movement. Um, it's um, warm and fuzzy, I promise. Lots of Teletubbies just for Tom Morris. Yeah, so this, this talk is about um, research we did this year um, together and with the Wikimedia storytellers and with Howie Fung, the senior product manager at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, and it was inspired by work uh, Benjamin Mako Hill did um, about projects that were like Wikipedia but failed. So thank you for, to him for ideas about methodology. Um, so when we think about why Wikipe people edit Wikipedia, um, everyone has stereotypes in their head, um, including readers, um, about who Wikipedians are and what we're like. And they tend to usually fall somewhere between like the person in their mother's basement with an IV drip and, and like two confirmed miracles away from sainthood. Um, and I think there's some value in that, but there's also a great deal of harm created by those stereotypes. And we wanted to sort of do a research project to take a little bit more uh, deeper look, look. <laughs> nuanced look at why we participate in these projects. Um, so Wikipedia has been around 11 years. You'd think this question would have been answered by now. Before we did this project, we did a lit review of about a dozen papers that all mentioned motivation in some way, starting from about 2005 up until now. And generally, they were pretty crap, um, even though they were peer reviewed. A lot of the papers were theory only without data. A lot of the papers, even when they had data, were from surveys, which predisposed a list of motivations to choose from upon people, rather than simply asking them. And then another class of papers, even when they were very, very good and informed this research, usually looked at Wikipedia in the context of very traditional theory of workplace motivations rather than what motivated people within online community spaces. Um, and our articles, at least on English Wikipedia, basically um, just sort of recap those papers and summarize them as an encyclopedia is wont to do. So we felt that, that this existing literature didn't give us quite enough answer. Um, so after the 2011 fundraiser, we realized that we were kind of sitting on a gold mine because our storytellers talked to hundreds of Wikipedians from all over the place. Uh, and they had all of this wonderful, rich uh, interview material. You know, th these were hour-long interviews that really got into like the, the meat and bones of why these people were contributing to Wikipedia. Um, so out of all those hundreds of interviews, we chose 23 of what, you know, more or less representative sample of really active uh, English Wikipedians, not necessarily from North America or Europe, um, but contributors to English Wikipedia. Um, and for another round of this process, just to get a slightly different sample of people, um, we've been working on an experiment kind of project where we thank every editor uh, who makes his or her thousandth uh, article edit to English Wikipedia. Um, and so I talked to 11 of those people. So they had just made a thousand edits um, to the article namespace on English Wikipedia. Um, so they were pretty active, but, but a little bit less active than the, the kinds of people that the storytellers were talking to. So um, I don't want to get too deep into the methodology here, except to say that we took these interviews and then basically coded them for times that people made statements about why they edited, um, and then sort of did a rough quantitative measurement of that data, balanced by the kinds of statements people were making, how strongly they felt about it, who they are, what their background was, that sort of thing. Um, Oliver. No. Quantitative is <laughs> quantitative is numbers, and qualitative is words. Yeah. So, so it's it's a mix of subjective analysis of trying to find where people made these statements, and then take that data, like each time someone made a statement and what type of statement it was, and then aggregate those numbers together to get some kind of balanced picture of what the different types of motivations were and how often they were used. Um, so we got a we gathered a list of main themes that tended to come up the most. Um, 
at, from these people. And we figured the best way to demonstrate those themes was to actually just sort of go through one by one and provide you with quotes from the actual people um, that told you why they felt that way. Um, so uh, one huge theme, uh, why we all participate in Wikipedia is because we're the kind of people who like autonomy. We don't like to be told what to do. Um, you may have noticed this about Wikipedians. Um, <laughs> the great thing about Wikipedia is you can, you can sort of choose your own adventure, right? You can be a new page patroller, or you can contribute to solely articles on birds in North America, or whatever. Um, you're free to edit what you like. And as Wikipedians, we, we enjoy that freedom. We really, it really motivates us to contribute more. And so one of the, the ways that people get a simplistic mission, I mean, uh, vision of who Wikipedians are is by assuming that all of our motivations are tied up in our like sort of grander mission, you know, the sum of all human knowledge, everyone around the world that Jimmy talks about. And even at the foundation, I think we can, we can get a simplistic view of people that were all these like altruists serving the mission because we believe in it. But the reality is that while people mentioned it a lot, they tend to mention it more when they were prompted to mention it. And um, it actually tends to be the kind of thing that the literature called a collective motivation. So something that everyone sort of can get behind and believe in, but it doesn't personally motivate them to come back and edit every day. It's just something that, a value that they share with everyone around them. Um, uh, topical interest. So this is actually interesting. It's a, it's a very common story of how people find Wikipedia. It's that they're already kind of obsessed with some particular topic, whether it's soccer statistics or 18th century painters or whatever. And they look for it in Google, right? Because that's what they do. They're interested in the topic. And the, the first hit is Wikipedia. So they go to Wikipedia and they see that the article is wrong or needs improvement or whatever. Um, and, and we're the kind of people, because of the autonomy thing, we like to just sort of jump in and, and, and make it better. And uh, Wikipedians just enjoy going off of one topic that they're really into. Um, I think this is really important when we think about ways of engaging new editors, especially because we know that new editors are going to want to do the sim same kind of thing. They're going to want to edit on articles that they're interested in, on topics that they're interested in. So we really need to think about ways of getting that information from people in a good way early on so that we can direct them towards the wiki projects or towards the collaborations or whatever that's happening on Wikipedia um, to get them into those areas quickly. Um, another motivation that came up a lot, this is probably one of the top five motivations, but I'm not sure everybody thinks about it, is the fact that people um, are motivated by just for the fact of Wikipedia's massive audience and feeling like their work is of use to someone. This comes up over and over and over again. Um, we also took a trip to Brazil recently to talk to Portuguese Wikipedians because we didn't know very much about Portuguese Wikipedia. And this came up as well there. Like It's sort of a cross-cultural thing. Like. I want to be writing in a place where I know people are making use of my work, even if it's the most obscure subject. Um, and I think this is one of those motivations that in some ways runs counter to the sort of like altruistic mission, mission serving thing, like it's a utility function. Uh, perfectionism. Of course, we're all huge, huge perfectionists. Uh, I am one of these people. If I see a comma splice, I start hyperventilating. Um, so. <laughs> I think uh, the wonderful thing I think about this particular motivation is that uh, right now we make it a little bit difficult for perfectionists to jump in quickly and fix the kinds of things that need fixing. Um, so if you're not familiar with wiki syntax or st formatting, um, you can't fix something that's wrong. Um, but hopefully with the visual editor coming out more or less soonish, um, that will encourage more of these perfectionist um, copy editing freaks like me. Uh, to m very easily be onboarded into the project and um, to be able to <coughs> unleash their inner grammar Nazi and mm -hmm. go forth. I, and I know this, th I think, I feel sometimes like this This motivation feels a little bit fuzzy or like a, a little bit negative in some ways, but it can oh, really no, I'm very be proud of this fact. the like, very proud. The, like <laughs> core motivator for a single person. Like one of my favorite Wikipedians of all time is this user called Draft Data. And he, Draft Data. he has like 15,000 edits and he's done nothing except, almost nothing except fix the incorrect use of comprised of in articles. By hand, like, manually, like, no and tools. He, and it's, it's not a bot. Like it's, it's totally, edits, it's totally contextual in every article. He's like my hero. He's amazing. Like, if anybody knows him, please yeah. like get him to come to our office. We'll give him a barnstorm in person. Exactly. So, and I don't, I don't think he wakes up in the morning and says, <laughs> I'm going to like serve widows in Africa with the sum of all human knowledge. Like he wakes up and he says, those fuckers, they, they messed it up again. You know, like. 
compromised on. Come <laughs> yeah, on. yeah. So uh, a related one to that that comes up a lot is is the challenge. So I woke up again today, and there's 20 new uses of comprised of, and I've, <laughs> I'm the one to fix them. It's got to be done. Um, this, this also relates to sort of um, like building expertise within Wikipedia and its community in and of itself, not in any particular subject or thing that you care about, but like you want to rise to the challenge and show that you're the top new page patroller or you're the top responder on the tea house or you're, you've written 50 featured articles. Like it's a really deep motivator for people. Uh, Self-expression. This is a little bit surprising, but when you talk to Wikipedians, uh, they actually will say that, uh, you know, my writing is my, my voice, it's my outlet. Um, so it, it, even though it's an encyclopedia and you would think that you don't get a lot of room for creative writing in an encyclopedia, um, you, you actually do. I think a lot of the content contributors would certainly say that um, it is a, a wonderful place to use your, your skills uh, and your talents as a writer um, and express yourself. Yeah, I think in my own Wikipedia article writing, um, the times that I feel this, like I think about this, is when I've written an article or made some edits. And then I go back in the history and I compare it to the like previous version that I was looking at. You know, I saw what I accomplished and built and I'm, I'm not thinking about whether it's an FA or not or like how many million people are reading it or any of those things. I just know that the article has been made better and that's very satisfying. Um, Right, responsibility. This is an interesting one. Uh, I think a lot of us, when we first enter the project, we make a couple of edits. We don't necessarily feel any kind of deep ties to the community, but once we really get into it, uh, we feel responsible for this content. It's not just some side project or hobby that we're involved in. This is like we are we are, we are Atlas holding up the world. Um, we have to protect this beautiful, magical thing that we've all created and have been a part of. Uh, and I think a lot of, of our, our increasing move towards quality in the encyclopedia comes from this kind of very deep motivation of, of feeling responsible for it. Feeling like when people criticize Wikipedia, they're criticizing us. They're saying that we are, you know, bad, inaccurate, um, ridiculous, whatever. Um, it's a really, it's a strong motivation for, for people, I think. And then there's just plain old addiction. There's like okay. that moment when you wake up in the morning <laughs> and, and you have to check the watch and, list. And you check your and you like compulsively check your watch <laughs> list and you can't get up from the computer until you check the at least looked at the diff, you know, like <laughs> of of the things that you're looking at. And this is this is this is good, but it's also something that we like people feel conflicted about. Like people say things like I I keep telling myself I'll cut back. Like or we've we've heard people who are like well, I, I wanted to contribute, and I was really like interested in it, but I knew that I would get totally sucked into it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there, there actually are ways that, um, as a community or as the foundation, we could actually help people do the things they want to do, but not feel like Wikipedia is this like horrible Such time suck in their lives, yeah. you know? Yeah. I play this game on the iPad that um, is time to the cycles of the moon, so I can't play certain parts of the game during certain <laughs> times of the month. I have to go do something else. Like, maybe there needs to be a thing that's like, holy smokes, you've just p patrolled like 200 new pages. You should probably take a break for five minutes and get a cup of coffee. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then another motivation that came up a lot that runs counter to this like mythos of the perfect altruist or the like really intense isolated nerd is the feeling of recognition, like whether it's from our peers or whether it's from readers or whether it's even from the people in our lives. You know, we interviewed or the storytellers interviewed a Wikipedian who's a teacher and he tells his students when he writes a featured article because they look up to him as an educator because he's able to do that. Um, and demonstrate that expertise. So I think by showing appreciation to others, we're, we're doing something really powerful to motivate our peers to be a part of the movement. Uh, yeah, interestingly, when I talked to the, uh, the slightly younger into the projects, um, the 1,000 edit people versus the really, really super highly active 5 million FA people, uh, the recognition thing was, was much less prevalent. Um, it seemed like they actually didn't feel like they deserved any kind of thanking or award, even, the, the, even though they had made like a really significant contribution to the project. Um, I think that's an interesting sort of uh, situation that we're in now on English Wikipedia where making a thousand edits is no longer like even a big deal. It's like nothing, you know, it doesn't deserve any, any kind of special recognition. A um, little, little concerning to me. So when we aggregated all of these um, 
instances of the most, so each one of the, the items in this graph that adds up to it is a time that someone made one of these statements about motivations. Um, and this graph is actually only the storyteller interviews, which I did intentionally because the storyteller interviews, in order to be useful for the fundraiser, people were specifically led to make statements about the mission, about the like broader, like, um, you know, sort of some of all human knowledge things. But even when people were led to make those statements, it still came up less than motivations of personal fulfillment or self-expression or some kind of compulsion or internal drive. Um, I think that's a really interesting conclusion that when we think about what people get out of editing, you know, like someone who doesn't know anything about Wikipedia is just baffled by the notion that we would do this for free because they don't understand that what we're getting out of this is a lot, actually. It's not, it's not, we're not self-sacrificing martyrs. Like, it's really enjoyable. And when it's not enjoyable anymore, people won't do it. Um, so I want to go sort of through the implications of the, you know, research we did and how we feel it um, impacts different parts of the movement. So for the foundation, for our jobs, for product managers, for designers, developers, we need to build features that treat people in a more like, as the more diverse community that they actually are rather than some sing singular simplistic function that gets them to do the same thing over and over again. Um, it's complicated, but I think just knowing that there are these different motivations out there is going to allow us to think about who different who features serve um, in terms of what they want out of it. Um, for the community, go ahead. Sorry, my slide. <laughs> for the community, what this means, um, I think I I was listening in on a, a Wikia talk earlier, and and somebody maybe it was even you mentioned that the Wikia community is a little different because it's it's kind of more about having fun and and taking it not so seriously. But Wikipedia editing that's like serious business. The wikis they are very serious business. I think we need to stop perpetuating that attitude. Uh, I think Wikipedia should be fun, and it is fun for people. Um, and we should we should find ways of of making it easier and and more enjoyable to do the kinds of of content work that we all love to do. Like. My favorite article that I wrote is called The Affair of the Sausages. I, it's about the, the Reformation in Switzerland. It's, I mean, I, I like the topic, but I wrote it because it was a fun article to write. Um, and I think we, we can all kind of acknowledge that our, our interest in passionate, geeky, weird topics can coincide with having fun and, and not taking it quite so seriously. And I think what this means for Wikipedia in terms of how everyone around the world sees it, whether we're talking to like our families during the holidays or people who are new to editing or the press or you know whatever we're doing, is that we need to make room for the idea that editing is something that appears to appeals to basically anyone. Like if our motivations are that we have fun, that we're interested in hobbies and certain topics, that we want recognition from other people, those are motivations that appeal to everyone. Like that doesn't take some kind of magical unicorn to like. Um, and I think that's that's really important to say to sort of combat those stereotypes of either Mother Teresa or Redality white and nerdy. <laughs> um, so. Uh, so that's it. So uh, any uh, questions, comments? Yatsi. <laughs> Yatsi was one of the editors we interviewed. Yeah. So thank you, thank you to everyone. I, I, I saw my quote. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah um, well, what I wanted to say is that um, about the having fun thing, the difficult thing is when you're someone like me, where you don't do a lot of content editing. I have fun with Wikipedia, but a lot of times you end up being in your, and you end up being on the serious side a lot when you're not doing content. And you end up getting in disputes with people because it's scandals get into you and stuff. So it's sort of like, I feel like that's part, another part of the problem for a lot of people who don't do content editing. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely try to escape from drama as much as possible by just focusing on articles in my volunteer time. And then in my work time, I have to participate in those arguments. Um, <laughs> but I think it's it's definitely, that's a problem. Like, I think it would be a lot nicer to have a community where you, you didn't you, you didn't have to, like, abandon everything and go and, and work on your article to sort of feel normal and stable, but then go and have to argue the next day about everything and sort of have this kind of schizophrenic way of participating. I think it would be nice if we could bring that sense of levity and enjoyment and pleasure to some of these conversations that are that are more serious. And I think we can do that. Um, I think there's nothing that stops us from doing that. Uh, I think the hand in the far back was up first. Thank you. Back then, we only just got 2,000 edits to it. And 
<laughs> yeah. The, well, the top editor on the, the editor's list on English Wikipedia is a million edits. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> Um, a lot, I think that's a really important point because it's something that um, we're interested in experimenting with on the team that we're on at the foundation is is ways to provide recognition to people who aren't in that top <coughs> editor slot, who aren't the top FA author. Whether that's every wiki project, if they want it, can have a leaderboard of the top editors or top content deliverers, you know, so that you're recognized in your area, or whether that's a easier abilities to find the people who are doing good new work and use functions like Wikilove, I don't know. Um, but there are a myriad ways we should be, can and should yeah. be recognizing people who aren't get re getting recognition now. Right, and that can be a community-led effort too. I mean, nothing stops any one of us from barnstarring someone that we see doing good work. Um, we can do it anytime we want to, and I think we should be doing it more. Yeah, thank you. Um, what do you think about some of, you need all these motivations to get people actually doing work. But do you think about, what do you think about some of these being harmful? Um, because you talked about self-expression, and I think about, there's a nice paper, uh, actually, it's called What Mine Is Mine. It's about people that are, uh, uh, the, the maintainers of these uh, articles that have, that have maintained templates. And you actually see they're really, really territorial. Yeah. And so this, so yeah, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that this, this self-expression or this recognition motivation can, can go overboard mm -hmm. and go, go to lead to something that is not good. What do you think? And I, th I think you have to balance it out. So what do you think about that? I, I agree. Um, everything in moderation, first <laughs> of all. Um, yes, including Wikipedia. I Unless think one of the important things to do when we talk about things like either community members of the foundation or chapters being experimental and trying new things is, n is not just asking people to be okay with like crazy new ideas and, and change, but recognize that like we can roll back those changes too. And if we like, mm -hmm. if we did something like we tested, um, you know, notifying people that, that, that were new, that they were among the top five contributors to articles, like we should test that in a way that measures whether those people become healthy, active members of the community and not just sort of slap it up there and assume that it's gonna do great. And I absolutely agree with you when, I, when we look at things like that there are benefits to not having bylines on articles, for instance, and stuff. Oh, hello. Uh, I, I work for Wiki and, and so I, I do a lot of editing on Wikipedia, and then I also do a lot of editing on Muppet Wiki and on other wikis, just on stuff that I really love. Um, mm -hmm. And the big difference that I see is, like one of my main motivations at this point is I make friends yeah. on, on the smaller sort of topic-based wikis. I meet other Muppet people. And, mm -hmm. um, and literally like made friends, like invited to people's wedding kind of friends. Wow, yeah. um, and, I, and that's just not an experience I've ever had on Wikipedia, and I think it's, it's probably just, just because it's so big. Yeah. That it's kind of the difference between like on, on a smaller wiki, it feels like a town. Mm -hmm. And when I look at, you know, an activity feed, I recognize almost everyone. And if there's someone I don't recognize, mm -hmm. then okay, possible new friend. Um, whereas on Wikipedia, it's New York City kind of. <laughs> new York City plus upstate New York yeah. plus, you know, that like you'll never run into that person again. So I wonder right. if, I know that like the wiki projects. Yeah, if any of you went to, to editor Eric Moeller's talk. I, yeah. Um, yeah. And so the question is, is it possible to, to make those a little bit more robust? I don't know if there's um, the kind of thing, for example, where like you only, a feed where you're only seeing recent changes that are just for that project. Does this already exist? Or it actually does exist on some being a genius. projects. They have like a list of all their pages, and then you can use the uh, related changes feature, and that mm. basically functions like a project watch list. Yes, I'm wondering if that's kind of just a way to help connect people with other yeah. folks who are interested in the invasion of sausages. <laughs> yeah. Affair like, of the sausages. But, uh, affair of, I'm sorry, but wouldn't, you, but wouldn't you love it if you found yes, somebody absolutely, else absolutely. Who, who felt the same way? And you know, you I think that the, a lot of the um, good and featured article and DYK, um, did you know, uh, processes are actually functioning kind of in that way because you can't by yourself get an article to featured status on Wikipedia. You need peer reviewers, you need copy editors, you need the people who know how to use the crazy SFN template system. Um, you need tons and tons of helpers. And, 
And the way you get that um, is you go and you ask people, and you have to ask them really nicely because it's all like scut work that no one wants to do. Um, and like I personally, I love participating in that kind of stuff because I make those kinds of social connections. I can help somebody get an article to feature status, and I feel really good about that. But it's so, it's a really totally informal system, and there's no infrastructure supporting it whatsoever. Um, it's just sort of been kind of created grassroots. Um, and I think we can all kind of work to make that a, a better, a healthier, more of like a community wiki project type atmosphere. Um, that would be, uh, for me, an awesome, awesome thing to see happening. Um, and if, if you didn't see it on that on that topic, look up the slides for Eric Moller's talk, because it's all about yeah. how wiki projects and the smaller subsets of, of collaboration in Wikipedia are our social graph, like are the people we're interested in that the foundation needs to build better software that connects you to those people in a more easy way. So you don't have to go to the related changes and, and hunt them down. But if you <laughs> right. want to know those things that they're delivered to you, I just want to second that last comment uh, about uh, wiki project, maybe relevant, uh, like more fun, entertaining ways to look at recent changes than say just a sorted watch list. I thought the uh, wiki how uh, presentation yesterday was really good about mm -hmm. how they have little entertaining ways to display recent changes. So I just showed that to someone else. So look that up wiki how I, I wish we could just copy that and uh, I yeah. think we get a lot more people interested and it'd be more fun to see what's going on I instead think, of a watch list. Right. We all, uh, if, if we've been around the projects long enough on Wikipedia, we all have this innate resistance to anything that has the word social in it um, because we think that'll distract us all from the very, very serious, important work that we're all doing. But I think that's... Uh, ridiculous. I think the social thing is what keeps it all together. Though that weird shifting informal fabric of social relationships of people who are copy editing each other's articles and reviewing and assessing, they all are connected in this, this social fabric kind of way. And and we need to like be really upfront about that, that that is actually how our project works. And if we want our projects to get better, we need to support that with infrastructure, software, resources, um, you know, effort. <laughs> Uh, before I forget, uh, we sort of informally announced that we'd have swag at this talk. I'm an idiot and forgot the stickers, but if you want one, to, uh, tomorrow we'll be walking around and we'll ha we have stickers that um, say, I edit Wikipedia because, and we'll let you write on any surface, like why you edit Wikipedia. Um, so yeah. feel free to steal some from us. <laughs> so I, I love that last comment about the social part, because um, the other day when, when Jimmy Wales was asking people, you know, what year they started on Wikipedia, and there was this huge round of applause for those who had been there the longest. Mm -hmm. I thought, because I, I am one who runs a, a Wikipedia that has about 70, or a, a wiki that runs about 75,000 pages now, I, and, and we have a lot of the same problems that Wikipedia has, only on a smaller scale. I think to myself, it's not the people who started our wiki that I would be clapping the loudest for. It's the people who got on recently who had to crawl through the broken glass of yeah. all <laughs> of all the rules that yeah. we have now, all the barriers of entry, mm -hmm. because these people have a nervous tick. They're looking like Inspector Dreyfus <laughs> on a <laughs> old Pink Panther movie by the time they've even made their first <laughs> edit before they've been reverted 29 seconds. I'm not sure if I understand first. that reference, but I support your comment. <laughs> <laughs> the old guys yeah. and, and gals like me will, will, will think yeah. of it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> now, what I, so, so just seriously, I mean, for those of you who are new, gosh, yeah. God bless you. you know, <laughs> so, so what I'm saying is we've got to work extra hard to get to the social right. because if we don't, we're going to see that downward curve do a hockey stick, yeah. Yeah. right? It's not just going to plane off. It's not just going to go down slow. We've got to avert the hockey yeah. stick going down. Right, because at some point, all these rules and policies don't just become barriers for new people. They become barriers for existing Wikipedians. Like, as it becomes more solidified and bureaucratic, nobody's going to want to stick around, not even the really, really bureaucratic lovers among us. <laughs> Uh, yeah, show of hands, current Wikipedians. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I think we're all on the same page here. Uh, it's not, not like a startling revelation. Um, we know this problem exists, and we have to start working on fixing it. Uh, do you have a mic? Okay, I think you. Yeah, I have, I have two uh, questions or comments. One, uh, um, have you 
given much attention to what the motivations of vandals are. Um, I, w I would suggest that maybe they're similar to actually the motivations of editors mm -hmm. in terms of making a difference of one kind or another. Mm -hmm. And um, the other question is uh, about the mo uh, how often or how much do you think people are motivated by a desire to promote a certain point of view, uh, whether they acknowledge it or not, and uh, despite the fact that Wikipedia is not supposed to be doing that. Uh, so y your second Oh, well, I'll go in order. Um, so the vandal thing, I think that's really interesting. Um, we know from just talking to people, we've never done any formal study of this, but we know just from talking to people that lots of really awesome, wonderful Wikipedians started out as vandals. Um, because people who have the mentality that... in the last session. Oh. <laughs> we, you know, we, we, the kinds of people who, who feel uh, like they can make a change to a page on uh, the internet uh, tend to be really bold and, and brash uh, young men sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think that that coincides with like the, the demographic of Wikipedians, right? Um, we're, we're very uh, so fix it kind of people, which is all, can also be a, a negative thing. Um, so I do think you're right that in, in some ways, but, th but that only speaks to the fact that, you know, vandals are, are one step away from conversion to uh, our, our ranks. Um, so. <laughs> um, but it would be an interesting study. That reminds me of another motivation, possibly classified as vandalism, not really amenable to conversion, which is like people being paid by the Chinese government, the Israeli government, U.S. Department of Defense, Bomo, and the Gates Foundation, Pfizer, Merck, and so forth, who are like incorrigibly <laughs> awful. And I have to say, I'm, all, I'm really impressed by the community's ability to detect and send those people off a lot yeah. of the times, but they are there. Right. But I think uh, y you mentioned self-promotion as well. Um, and I think it's actually a gradient, right? Uh, a lot of, of, of the people who start by editing Wikipedia and focusing on a topical interest are really passionate about that subject, and some of them have jobs related to that subject. Um, some of them you know, work in a museum and they want to write about the artifacts in their museum. Is that a conflict of interest? Is that self-promoting their museum? Uh, I don't know. I think we should probably all be more careful about not falling into black and white kind of arguments and stereotypes and saying, well, single purpose account, well, self-promotion, uh, you know, you have a conflict of interest. Um, when people are just doing the things that all normal Wikipedians do, which is writing about the stuff that they love um, and wanting to see it have better coverage on the internet. Uh, a methodological comment, uh, people that study public opinion, <laughs> public opinion is asking people about what the motives <laughs> If you ask people after an election how they voted, mm -hmm. pretty much invariably will tend to, uh, the percentage will be higher for the women. Uh, for uh, m market researchers, when they ask about people liking products, they'll tend to want to please uh, mm -hmm. the company that's testing their product and they will overemphasize their intention to buy. And I think the, the concern with the social context in which these questions are asked right. surely has the bias some of your results. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the main question. And the other one is, can we di differentiate by types of, by categories on Wikipedia? So people, for example, that uh, uh, edit uh, uh, descriptions of their organizations, mm -hmm. OK? They are more interested. What all, almost all of the motivations you've described, or maybe all, are what social scientists would call expressive motivations, mm -hmm. as opposed to instrumental mm -hmm. motivations, which is sort of disparaged uh, within the, within mm -hmm. the So anyway, it, it, it's a variation, but the basic question is the methodological one. Uh, it so some of the some of the overly positive spin is is due to just like us selecting quote like this is subjective research in the sense that we selected quotes to present to people that kind of thing and we didn't show some of the things where people felt like conflicted about their motivations or like were really deeply honest and personal about some of those things. Um, just for the sake of like preserving their privacy, you know. Um, so I don't think it was happy sunshine all the time that they were trying to like please us and thinking that it was a yeah. perfect thing. There is a bias, however, that we're we're asking people who were completely like 
successful Wikipedians. And we also didn't look at, we, we didn't have a good data about um, their change in motivations over time. Like what the difference is between someone who's made five edits and someone who's made 50,000. Um, yeah. That's an interesting question. Or someone who started in 2005 and someone who started in 2012. Yeah, we don't know that. Yeah. Go, Oliver. Um, I think, oh, um, I think the lady was oh. Talking oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. I have a question about uh, wiki projects and uh, well organizing community to uh, on, the, on some kind of topic to improve uh, Wikipedia articles on that. I'm part of an, an online fan community where people complain a lot about uh, articles on Wikipedia, on fan fiction, hmm. where, where some legal issue is uh, presented wrongly. And people always think about we should correct this, but nobody ever does because Wikipedia has this, rep abo among us, Wikipedia has this kind of <coughs> reputation for being this huge sleeping animal that you should definitely not poke <laughs> and people will yell at you if you come in and things like that. So yeah. um, I was thinking about wiki us using a, some kind of wiki project as a, to form a sort of support group for people to make, <laughs> it, e to make it more accessible uh, for them to edit. But uh, I think that would never work for us because we already have a community infrastructure elsewhere. Hmm or live journal on, on uh, lots of other de of other websites. So it's not it's never going to work to, pu to pull people in and make yet another social network for them on Wikipedia. So I was wondering if there are other examples of uh, uh, wiki projects or uh, su support groups for Wikipedia that where, where the actual talking and such takes place in other locations, or would that sort of thing not be recognized S by there's Wikipedia. there's uh, good examples and and negative examples. Mm -hmm. So so there have been cases where people formed like private mailing lists in order to coordinate activity around that wasn't around at yeah all. yeah <laughs> around around certain articles and that's the kind of thing that was definitely not welcome <laughs> in the community. But then there are also positive examples. So for instance, I find it I find it really funny that like um, Americans and Canadians and Germans are like tend to be very like anti like Facebook usage among Wikipedians mm -hmm. in we went when we went to Brazil they have a very very active Facebook yeah. group where they talk about Wikipedia all the time it's and it's totally like a really fun. important tool for them for connecting um, not only like in the group of super active editors but like getting all of their in real life friends to see what they're doing on Wikipedia and why it's important um, go ahead yeah, so um, I joined Wikipedia as late in 2004 I actually love this discussion because I actually I now work work for Wikipedia and our community support staff, so I, I see a lot of this every mm -hmm. day. And um, as much as I like seeing these really drawn out, really high level ideas of you know like self gratification and you know addiction and things like that, I think there's for me when I first edited, there was this kind of this magical coolness factor. Like when I I saw a piece of information I wanted to add, I added it, I pressed save, and bam, it's there. And I don't think I've actually really lost that. Like I said, you know, I've, I was on Wikipedia in 2004. I work for Wikia now. I have my own personal wiki that's huge. And I do all this stuff. I don't think I've actually ever really lost that magical feeling, that, that yeah. feeling that I'm doing something new, something unique, that something that, you know, I sort of, you know, I might be very technical, but I sort of really understand completely the fact that when I press that button, that goes everywhere at once in the world. And yeah, I, I, think I think that's a really cool, just a very base level assumption that I think a lot yeah. of people, probably that very first experience when they, to do a wiki, like, wow, that was really cool just to press that button and know that everyone in the world can see it, and I added a little something. I we actually, we had a category when we were coding that was, uh, that was called Wikipedia is a magical, awesome, unique, wonderful place, because we saw those <laughs> words cropping up over and over again, and that was one of the motivations that we ran into, but it didn't make it into this. I, I, really cool. I've been you know, doing this for eight years now. Yeah, I, I totally feel the same way. It's I... <laughs> See, but in the context of our research, my researcher brain is like, you're expressing autonomy, yeah. <laughs> audience, <laughs> and it's like... a combination <laughs> of factors. I think, I think that's true. I'm just saying, I think it's a very good base level. Yeah. It's the motion that it's that yeah. level. Yeah. It's time to do more high level ones. But I think that's a very cool... A, a lot of the nuance is definitely lost in putting them in, in and trying to stick it in one word container. Like, right. yeah. Uh, I think the gentleman in the red shirt had his hand up and then SJ. SJ first. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and, uh, and I think just having this kind of conversation really helps. I mean, it certainly makes me feel a lot less stressed out about the discussions <laughs> I've been having on this recently. So maybe there's some way to, to make this make that this whole process 
more visible. Mm. So they, so they not just some researchers coming in and then coming back with their reflections after it's happened, but reminding everyone that it matters and we're thinking about, we're thinking about these spaces together. Yeah. I don't know how you, how you, how your thinking is uh, about how to talk about this in the community, but uh, given that we yeah. have so many wiki researchers, um, how would you like to see the next generation of this, of this kind of survey happen? I don't know. I mean, I think we, I'd definitely love to continue this project, um, and I still have people who I've been, you know, in touch with to do more interviews and talk to people. And I think, um, I think this is something that absolutely needs to be done by the Community Foundation all the time. We need to be reaching out to our users. It's a duh kind of thing. Like we have this community of people. We need to talk to them about why it is they're in this community. <laughs> it's an obvious, obvious thing, and it should be an ongoing project. Uh, and we should have a greater and greater, greater database from which to draw and uh, we'll, once we start building more and more of this kind of information we'll actually be able to see more nuanced trends and patterns and we, we'll, we'll have that historical data and I think it's just really invaluable and I think you're right that we should be making it more available for everyone not just the people who come to Wikimania to hear us talking um, but it's kind of hard to figure out how to present that but we'll think about it definitely and thank you for thanks for the support <laughs> uh, anybody else um, I don't know how this would actually work, but I think it would be awesome if we could find a way to have um, volunteers interviewing each other. I don't know how yeah. it would work, but I think it'd be really, really cool, and then we could just, I mean, so I'm here, I'm trying to interview people at the at Wikimania, and um, we could use help, so if anybody <laughs> <laughs> wants to help with interviewing each other, I don't know how it would work for this, but um, uh, that's one idea. But I actually have a question for um, everyone who just listened to the, the presentation. If as you were listening, you thought of other motivations that didn't fit in any of the categories that they presented on that, um, I don't know, if you have any other ideas of ways that you feel that you didn't think came up in the presentation. Just shout them out if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I think you covered well. Oh, oh. I think making friends is the one that wasn't We're not here to make friends. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think... <laughs> yeah, exactly. I hate all you people. For, uh, time. I think we're we're running out of time. So if there's not any final questions, we should we should probably hit it. Thank you so much to everyone who we talked to and everyone the storytellers talked to. You guys are amazing and yeah. wonderful, and you make us happy every single day uh, with your beautiful, beautiful projects. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs>